It's Sunday dinner time. Guess what we're making? I'm going to show you a good old fashioned Sunday dinner. You know, guys, people don't take the time to make Sunday dinners anymore. I hear it all the time. Life is so busy. Now, let's couple that with being celiac or gluten free for your lifestyle. It is a tough call. Nice, good old fashioned roast beef dinner. It's tough because I want the Yorkshire pudding. Can't have it. I want the gravy. Can't have it. Today, what I plan to show you is you can have it all. Very easy to do. Okay, and kind of, you know, it's kind of interesting because I'm going to work backwards here. I don't actually need those beef drippings to make this gravy. I'm going to make it in front and I'm putting the beef in at the end. I, the beef drippings are a bonus. Don't really need it. I'm turning on my pan. Now with this, this is really cool. This is all flavor. Take a look what's happening here. I've got some beautiful beef stock that is going to be the basis of the gravy. I've got my bechamel mix. This is roasted garlic oil. Here I have tomato paste. I have some thyme. Nutritional yeast, very cool thing. You sprinkle it on popcorn, put it on salads, it bumps up flavors. Really awesome flavor bumper. I've got the tamari soy sauce here. Well, it's tamari sauce. And keep word, guys, remember, remember, when it comes to tamari, look, read the labels, gluten-free. Also, actually, let's back our track up here a bit. Also, the tomato paste, very important. Of course, what kind of gravy doesn't have red wine? Yum, going in. And last but not least, the Worcestershire. Again, about the Worcestershire sauce, I want to explain to you again. It's really weird because if you're in Canada, you can't have it because it's got malt vinegar in it. If it's bottled in the United States, it has white vinegar. You're all good to go. So read your labels and you can f flavor build anything you want here. I want to show you how easy this is. I've got some beautiful roasted garlic going into the pan. It's about a third of a cup. Now, don't worry that it's going to be um, measurements for anything. If you go to my website, www.youneverknow.com, I'm going to have all the recipes sitting there waiting for you. Now, my bechamel blend here is really fantastic. Come on down to the store. We're going to give you some to make your own gravy on the house, I'm telling you, to start you off with your Sunday dinners. That's going right into the pan, the two of them. You can actually smell the garlic. It's lovely. We're going to incorporate it so that we just want to mix our flour up. Usually I like to do this with a whisk at the very beginning. And the reason being is I can whip it around a little bit better. What I'm trying to do here is just dissolve the bechamel blend in with the oil before I hit it with the beef stock. I'm going to put salt and pepper right in the pan at the bottom as well. And now I'm going to be putting in the stock. You just want to see it come to a bit of a bubble. It's starting to happen now. Take a look here. You see how it's starting to thicken a bit? This part here is actually my thickening agent. I'm now going to pour in the beef stock and it's going. And you're going to whisk it right up. You can hear it hitting the pan and it's going to thicken this gravy up beautifully. Now, this would be kind of a boring gravy just with beef stock. So this is where your flavor bumpers come in. Um, really important on adding flavor. Gluten free is kind of tough because you have to be so careful on the ingredients that you're picking. The thyme is a natural for me with the roast beef in particular. I'm popping it right in. Even before the boil starts here, I'm going to throw everything in. Nutritional yeast. This is awesome. I've spoken to you before about the, the gluten-free pantry. Now, this is a must, really important. It's actually loaded with vitamin Bs, believe it or not. So it's also very good for you. And as I said, you know what? You can sprinkle it on popcorn. It's got a nutty flavor to it. It's kind of nice. People sometimes tell me it, it's like cheesy, but I don't think so. So I'm putting that whole thing right into there. I've got that tamari sauce I was talking about. And again, please remember, it's really important that you're going to be doing this as a gluten-free. So read your labels. Not all soy or tamari is, in fact, gluten-free. Just going to whip it around a little bit. Let this come together. Red wine. Who doesn't like red wine? It's going not only in the glass, but it is going in our gravy as well. OK. I've got the Worcestershire. Now that's got a nice kind of like a tang to it. Um, be careful how much of this you put in because you could actually make it a little bit almost uh, sour and you don't, you're not going after that taste. You're going after the old fashioned roast beef. Now what I have left is I also put in some tomato paste. Uh, there's several on the market. Now when you're looking at the tomato paste, read the label. 
It should be pure tomatoes, really. Um, if it's not and it has any other words that you don't even know what those words mean, drop it and walk away because there is so much paste around available to you. I'm just popping that right in. And basically, we're going to let this gravy do its thing. Let's give it a little bit of a stir. Bring it up to the boil. This gravy takes about mm, 20 minutes, 25 minutes maybe. Okay, while this is doing its thing, we're going to move on to our roast beef. Yum. Uh, when you're picking a beef to roast, pick uh, a rump roast is a really good choice, as is an inside round. Beef doesn't really, in my mind, have a lot of flavor. It's what you do to the beef that creates the flavor. Uh, this goes back, I mean, my great-grandparents, that was the Sunday meal meat and potatoes. I think that's where the saying actually came from. Um, I'm just doing a little two pound roast here and I'm doing that for a reason. Uh, cooking time, this is for a family of four. I've got the gravy happening. But you know what, if you have the time and you're just lounging around on Sundays, go ahead and cook a big roast. Lob half of it off. You can have leftovers for the week. You can make sandwiches out of it. You can do shepherd's pies, all kinds of stuff. But basically all I'm doing is I'm taking this roast here. It's going into the pan. Now, do you remember the roasted garlic I ended up putting into the gravy mix. Well, I've got the roasted garlic that I roasted off from that, and that's going all over the roast beef. I like garlic in my beef. I'm taking the garlic. Now, look at that. You just press it with your hands. That's how nice it is. It's really, really easy to work with. It adds a lot of flavor. I'm just going to rub this whole beef, loading this with flavor. Beck, I'm going to need your help if you don't mind, because now that I'm doing the garlic part, I think I need you to help me with the salt and pepper. So if we can just get a little sprinkle of salt and pepper. This is going to cook into an oven, a 375 degree oven. It's going to take about an hour and 15 and that's going to bring you to probably about a medium rare. If you want to have rare, of course go longer, maybe another 10 minutes. I suggest you always use a thermometer when you're doing it. Um, reason being that you can't really tell your temperature. There's actually a, a trick and I got garlic on my fingers but I'll do it anyway. Pinch the tip of your nose. That's rare, right there. That's rare is what you're looking for. Uh, if you can just sprinkle that a little bit for me, that would be great. Okay, so the gravy's on the go. Uh, the roast is ready to go into the oven. If we do that, again, 375, we're putting it in for about an hour, hour and 15, if you pop that in for me, thanks so much. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to show you how to go, what goes with roast beef, guys, Yorkshire pudding. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Sunday dinner. Now take a look. Gravy's almost there. Look at how beautiful that is. Goodbye gluten. Who wants gluten gravy? Beautiful stuff. Okay, roast beef's in the oven. We're moving on to the Yorkies. Best part of roast beef dinner. I've got three eggs here. Keep in mind your biggest thing, guys, you want your ingredients to be room temperature. Really important on this. Three eggs, I'm just whipping them a little bit like that. We're gonna add some milk to this. Again, this has also been out and I've put my ingredients for about two hours now at room temperature. Don't worry about getting sick on this. It's gonna get some pretty high heat in the oven so it's not gonna be a big deal. I'm just whipping it around. Now here, I've got my all-purpose blend. This is so versatile for many different things from muffins to cakes, doesn't really matter, but this here, killer Yorkshire puddings, like killer. To it, Yorkshire, if you keep in mind when it comes to gluten-free baking, one of your problems you're having is you've lost that elastic, right? You've got to bring it back in. So for the Yorkshire pudding, what I've done is I'm taking a teaspoon of baking powder. That's all I'm doing to hit my all-purpose blend. That's what's going in there. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of salt as well, which is also going to allow it to bump up. Let me just take it this way for a second, blend it a tiny bit. I'm incorporating right into the bowl. Now, while I'm making this here, I've got a muffin tin in the oven. I put about a half inch of oil into it. That's all I've got in there. I'm giving this a good whisk. Just getting all the flour. Don't worry about lumps in this, by the way, because it will cook out in the oven. It doesn't have to be super smooth. Going maybe about a minute on this. Now the key, big key, when you do it, half inch of oil, maybe half inch, that's all you need to put in there, into your muffin tins. You're gonna pop it in the oven at a 400 oven, probably about 10 minutes is what I'm thinking. Yeah, go for 10 minutes for sure. 
Uh, it's going to be a smoking hot. You're, you'll see smoke coming off the oil. Do not use, by the way, do not use olive oil. It does not have a high smoke capacity to it. So we've got canola oil that we've used here. Thanks, Becca. Now take a look. This is pretty hot. Uh, don't be playing around with this. That's some pretty hot oil. Watch what's happening here. It's going in. See, it's sizzling. Take a good look at that. That's how hot this oil is. It's already starting to cook the Yorkies all on their own. Now this is going into a very high heat oven of 400 degrees, like I've told you, but it's not staying there. I'm gonna go 10 minutes at the 400. I'm then going to turn it down to a 350 degree oven because I, otherwise it's gonna to brown too much. It'll actually go black on the outside, which isn't very good. It's not what you're looking for here. Almost there. See how it's cooking? It's sizzling. That's, it's not going to work for you if you don't have the oil to this level. Becca, do me a big favor. Be very careful because it is hot. Pop this back in the oven, please. Roast beef sitting in the oven. Going to come out anytime soon. And gravy again, like I said, almost ready to go. Look at the back of the spoon. It's completely coated. It's a perfect consistency, this gravy. Perfect. And the flavors, boy, they're all together. I wish you guys were in this kitchen right now smelling it because it does smell pretty awesome. Now let's move over here. Who has Sunday dinner without dessert? Usually the best part of it, right? We're going to be doing a crumble. Now what I've got happening with this crumble, we're going to start it off. We'll finish it off in a little bit. I'm going to take strawberries, beautiful plump strawberries. If depending on the time of year, frozen fruit will work fantastic for this. There's no rhyme or reason to this one here. I'm just cutting into sizes and I'm making a mash of fruit. I love fruit for dessert any time of year. Um, when I was playing with this particular recipe, by the way, what I did was uh, first I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a really cool berry pie, which I did and thought, nah, forget it. I want the crumble. Crumble is very heartwarming. It's a perfect Sunday finish to a Sunday dinner with a nice bit of ice cream. Uh, speaking of which, with ice cream, uh, did you know that some ice cream does contain gluten? You've got to read, again, read your labels. Um, recently, I think it was August the 4th this year, uh, it's come into effect. The government has legislated that products on the shelves by food manufacturers have to name the allergens. They have to tell you if there's gluten in it. They have to tell you if there's peanuts in it. So it should make it a little bit easier for you, um, I'm hoping. We'll get those in here. We're gonna also pop in some beautiful raspberries and blueberries. This dessert works whether or not the fruit is fresh or frozen. It really works lovely. Okay, well I've got some peaches that I've got to work on here. And um, I'm gonna show you the crumble first before I get into that. The crumble is quinoa flakes. It's an awesome protein all on its own. It's got the complete chain of amino acids to it. This is actually the flake, not the seed. If you take a good look at that, this is really good for things like date squares, oatmeal cookies, anything like that. Um, it is organic, as I said, it comes from the Andes. It's actually a seed, it's not a grain. Very good to have if you are celiac because it's so high in protein and it is so high in fiber. I'm going to be putting in some brown sugar with this. And I've got, again, my all-purpose flours in here is the other part to it. I'm gonna be needing to add some melted butter into here, which we'll do in a few minutes. Okay, well, I'm gonna peel some peaches here and let you guys go for a minute. When you come back, we'll be finishing dessert and going to plating. We're still on the dessert portion here. Remember earlier, we got the strawberries, the blueberries, the raspberries, and the peaches. Okay, into it is going some cinnamon. Cinnamon and peaches go really lovely together. I've got organic cane sugar. I'm popping that in as well. And I'm not putting a lot, just a tiny little bit just to sweeten it up. I really like the sweetness of the fruit. Okay, now cornstarch. This is an important part because the cornstarch is actually gonna act as a thickening agent. You wanna have a lot of the sauce for sure, but you don't want it just pure liquid. I'm just gonna give it a little mix up. Now don't, don't worry about seeing the cornstarch this way. It will break down because of the juices into the fruit. This is such a lovely, lovely dessert, as I was saying earlier. Okay, the crumble part, what I got happening here, melted butter that goes into, remember we spoke about earlier, it's my all-purpose flour, the organic quinoa, and the brown sugar. 
I'm just going to take the butter, mix it in to make the beginning of the crumble. You don't want to add too much butter, just enough that's going to hold it together. And look at how this is coming together here. Now, you know what could be fun on this as well? I didn't do it, but as an afterthought, you could throw some maybe walnuts, omega-3, bang on with that. So your nutrition, you're always thinking about nutrition when you're eating gluten-free. Walnuts are a really nice nut to have in your uh, cupboard, your gluten-free pantry, to bump it up. So you could actually give a little bit of crunch here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna sprinkle the crumble right on top. I'm not gonna manhandle it, anything like that. All I'm doing is giving a little bit of a sprinkle. This is gonna go into my oven now. It's gonna go into a 350 degree oven and it's gonna take no more than 30 seconds. And I kinda of like putting this into my oven just about when I'm serving dinner because by the time you sit down and you eat your dinner, what's better than having a nice warm crumble coming out of the oven? Okay, well this is gonna go in. Becca, if you don't mind popping that in the oven for me, please. Thank you. Now let's move on to plating. Right here, this has been sitting for 15 minutes. It's beautiful, it's nice and rested. It's very important, by the way, to let that roast beef set. You want all the juices to go right back into it before cutting, so don't get too anxious, no matter how good it smells. Take a look how good that looks, yum. And you can tell the little bite I already took, I just couldn't wait. Uh, we're just gonna slice some nice pieces on. Now this is cooked to a medium rare, take a good look at that. Couple of slices, now keep in mind as well, guys, when you're eating meat, it's a complete protein. It's a really actually a really high protein. You don't really need more than any more than four ounces per serving. Bigger than that, it's kind of, I don't know, it's piggish. Don't really have to have it for your system. Interesting, I'll tell you something that I learned. When you have protein in a meal, you're not supposed to have any more than 30 grams per meal. The body can only metabolize that much protein at one sitting, so the rest actually gets stored as fat, believe it or not. Uh, you think you're building muscles, but you're not. Okay, so here's that beautiful roast beef. Earlier, we had the Yorkshire puddings. They've just come out. They're lovely. Look at how nice they've risen. Uh, one word, if you have a convection oven, funny enough, that's the air that's blowing around. That's what tends to happen. Instead of going rising high, the wind's blowing it over, but that's okay. It still tastes fantastic. Let you grab that, please. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to pop a couple of these right on here. Earlier, I made some rustic mashed potatoes. I didn't feel I needed to show you how to do that part. Take a look here on this one. This is delicious. This one here has, uh, I kept the skins on again. Remember, always remember, you want to have extra fiber when you're eating gluten-free. So I've left the skins on this. I also bumped this up with, again, roasted garlic in my roast beef dinner. And I also put some horseradish, which gives a real nice flavor to it. Okay, now, what's the best part of the dinner? The gravy with the Yorkshire puddings. Hands down, that is my favorite. Let's just come on over here. Put that down. Perfect. Thanks, Becca. A little bit of gravy, and maybe you want a lot of gravy, but take a good look at that. Oh, yum. I am hungry. Now, this is our Sunday dinner, and Becca, Sunday dinner. Where's dessert? Totally forgot dessert. Let's bring it in and finish off with dessert. Okay, as I said, this is a fantastic, easy Sunday dinner. Gluten-free or not, you can have it. This actually tastes better, it's lighter. You don't get that big, full feeling at the end of the meal when you're eating gluten-free, completely different. And the best part, oh, might want to borrow those gloves. Take a look at this. I wish you could smell it. This is fantastic. This is our crumble. Now we're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes, of course, because you'd burn your face off, but a nice scoop of ice cream with this is fantastic. Remember, anybody, any of you, can have Sunday dinner. A Little bit of effort, you got the ingredients, you got the recipes, make it for your family. Thanks for watching.